Hi there, and welcome to our first part of Homemade Towersy Part 2. You are very, very welcome, and we're delighted to share a day of Towersy fun, music and magic with you. Uh, this first part is, is all about workshops and joining in, so get those creative juices flowing. Have a look on the website and you'll see a list of materials that you'll need for some of these craft workshops. So we've got a whole raft of craft workshops followed by a brilliant beginner's baran workshop for which you don't need a baran drum, just a bit of cardboard and a wooden spoon from the kitchen. Um, and then a lovely bit of mindfulness from our good friends making stuff better. So enjoy this first section and uh, we'll see you afterwards. Take care. Hello and welcome to Craft at Homemade Towersy. I'm Mr Stomp and today I'm going to be showing you how to do two of the crafts that I would have been doing at Towersy this year. Firstly, we'll be looking at how to make a macrame leaf. This is quite trendy at the moment. Secondly, a much simpler project is to make a Towersy treasure tin or money box. So, let's get started. Macrame is on trend at the moment and here's a simple way to make a beautiful macrame leaf. These are the tools and materials you're going to need for this project. First of all, get yourself an interesting stick. Maybe go down the beach, find some driftwood, go in the woods, or maybe you'll find something round the garden. The length of the stick is actually not that particularly important. It depends on what sort of design you're going to do. I'm just going to do the one macrame leaf. You can get a longer stick. You can put two or three on it. Um, next, you're going to need a comb. In preparation for cat towels, they seem to have about a hundred of these, so we'll get rid of those. You're going to need yourself a sharp pair of scissors, a ruler, and some cards to work on. I'm also going to use some beads as well. These are inexpensive, you may already have them, and they're optional. Lastly, let's come on to the twine. This is the best twine I've found to date, and it has two really important things. First of all, it's readily available and you may already have it. It's in garden centers and hardware stores, which is widely used in gardening for tying up runner beans and the like. It has two really uh, good properties. First of all, it actually uh, um, combs out nicely. And secondly, secondly, if you do decide to go and buy some t twine, go online and have a look at Nuts Scene. They have a, a wide selection of colors and are quite inexpensive. Now, had I been doing this for Towersy, what I've done is probably chosen a much more bright colour, maybe a red or a nice teal colour. The first thing you need to do is decide how big a leaf you're going to make. Now, I've decided I'm going to make my leaf about 15 centimetres across and about, top to bottom, between 20 and 22 centimetres long. So the first thing you do, need to do is actually is cut the, cut the cross threads. Now, the actual cross threads are a double thread of about 77.5 centimeters long. And the easiest way to cut these is to get yourself a piece of card, measure 7.5 centimeters, and I'm adding on about 20, 20 millimeters or two centimeters for tying and working. And just wrap around the card a number of times. Then cut, and then you have cross threads of all the same length. And you see that one of these put together is going to be ample to do that sort of construction. Now, you're going to need about, I think, 50 or so to create a leaf. You count these knots here, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, so that's 20, 40, probably 50 to 60 in total. Next, cut the central thread. We said it was going to be about 20 centimeters, so I need a double amount of that. I'm going to cut it more like 30 to give myself plenty of leeway. So cut there. Now I'm going to attach it to the stick. A couple of ways you can do that. The simplest way is to do a simple cow hitch, which is to create a loop and pull the string through like that. 
we could do some um, winding around the top to create a better design if you fancy that. I'm going to be putting on some uh, beads. If they don't, if they thread, that's okay. If you find they don't thread, a simple way to do that is to use a bit of prick stick to keep the thread together, and then it should be able to you should be able to put them through the beads quite easily. Now I'm going to start working on the main body. For this you need the cross threads. So take two of those and it's a very simple knot and once you get the hang of it, it's quite easy. The thing to do is to be methodical and take your time. So first cross thread I'm going to put under the horizontal rope and the second cross thread is going to be across the top of it like that. What we're going to do is this. Take the ends of the second one and poke it through the loop formed by the first. Like that. Then the tails of the first put through the loops of the second. And then gently pull until you have a knot. Get another two threads and this time start the opposite way around. Well, this time it's from my right going underneath, the one going from the left is on the top, so put the threads through, the tails through the loop, one, two, and the tails through the other loop, like that, pull them tight, then move each knot up as you do it. And just continue, this one going underneath, this one going on top, until you've got the length that you want on your leaf. When you've finished doing all the cross threads, push them up nicely and then do a simple knot at the bottom of the two vertical threads to keep it all together. Now looking at a close up of the threads, if you take one, you see you can actually unwind it and it's actually comprised of three separate threads. If you unwind each of these right the way back to the horizontal, the vertical string, you then have three threads instead of just the one. And you need to do this with all the cross threads and the two vertical threads. When you've unraveled the threads, take a comb and gently tease the threads into line and this gets you the final effect that you're looking for. You'll find that this produces quite a lot of fluff and perhaps if you're asthmatic or anything like that you might find it prudent to uh, wear a mask but it soon comes to be a very nice fine edge to the leaf. finish off, draw yourself a template for the shape that you actually want your leaf to be. Put your, your um, leaf design on it and very carefully cut round all the loose ends to create the shape that you want. And there you have it. One Towersy Craft Macrame Leaf. Now let's move on to the uh, treasure tin or money box project. This is a much simpler project and it features a coffee tin that you've probably got in your recycling already because it's a, a coffee, uh, make a coffee that's widely available in the UK supermarkets. There's normally two sizes of tin, a large one or a small one, so choose which size of tin you're going to use. I'm going to use a small tin, I think. <laughs> This is a simple colouring in, in exercise. Download from the festival site the template. There's one for a small tin, there's another one for a large tin. Download the one you want, do your own design by colouring it in, and then we fix it to the tin. I decided to print it on yellow paper, and that's my design. So what I'm going to do now is just put some print stick along that edge. Stick it onto the tin, roll it round, 
and on the reverse side, another line of spread stick, keep rolling and match it up. There you have your very own Towsy treasure tin or money box. Thank you for watching Craft at Homemade Towsy. Hope to see you next year. Bye. Hey guys, and welcome to Towsy Crafts. And here I'm going to be showing you how to make a really cool paper kite with items you can find in your own home. Now here are some things that you'll need. First of all, some string for your kite. Now you can buy special kite string for this, but if you don't have any, just find something that's thin and flexible but won't cut your hands. Some paper ribbon. Now this will work as the tail for your kite to make sure it's stable and stays up in the air. Again, if you don't have this, you can make do by cutting up some biodegradable bags into strips. You'll need this to be between a metre and a metre and a half long. A sheet of A4 paper, some scissors, some masking tape, a wooden skewer, and finally a hole punch. Now yours doesn't need to be as big or as bulky as this one, this is just what we had on hand. Now, to start our kite, first of all, you want to take your A4 piece of paper and fold it in half like so. Try and line up the corners as closely as possible and you can use your nail to get a nice crisp fold. Next, we're going to add a second fold. From the side we just folded, add a second one, only this time, make it add a slight diagonal, lapping over just a few centimeters as shown. Once you have settled on placement, use your nail as before to make this a nice crisp line. Now, if we leave the fold we just established in place, we can open up the paper like so, giving us the final shape of our kite. To keep it in place, take a piece of masking tape and put it over the middle fold. The next stage is to make a hole so we have somewhere to attach the string. Turn over the kite and take note of the spare tab at the back. The hole will need to be closer to the end with the thinner part of the tab, but allow enough space from the bottom so the kite can stabilise and the hole won't go over the edge of the tab. Putting some masking tape over where you want to punch the hole will make the paper stronger and avoid tearing. When punching the hole, check the placement of the rest of the kite as to not add any unwanted holes in unwanted places. The next stage is adding the skewer to make sure your kite keeps its shape during flight. It will go along the top, reaching each corner, so check the length of wood needed and you can cut it to size. You may need to ask an adult to help you do this as it can be tough to cut. Once you have the skewer in place, secure it with your masking tape. Now to start decorating. We're starting with the tail, as this may need longer to dry than the paper of the kite. You'll need to decorate this using pens and patterns that will dry fully, as tearing and waterlogging will make it useless as a kite tail. I'm going for some simple stars and swirls on mine, but you can colour it any way you like. Once you have coloured in your kite's tail, it's time to decorate the head. Speaking of heads, I put a silly face on the back of mine. You can add as much colour as you want on this part of the kite, so make it as out there as you want, so long as it can dry and doesn't rip. And here we have it. Just tie the string to the kite. I recommend a triple knot, ensuring it's secure and won't come undone. And finally, stick the tail at the base of the kite. 
and that's it, a fully functioning kite. Take it out for a fly in an open space and even a little bit of wind should take it soaring. I hope you enjoy crafting this summer and hopefully this helps you to enjoy the nice weather while it's still here. Have a happy, safe Towersy. Hello and welcome to Towersy 2021 Family Craft Activities. Now we're going to make a photo or picture frame today and we're going to use cardboard and various other materials. We're going to use scissors, sharp pencils and bits of string. So please be sure that you do this activity with your grown ups and not on your own. So let's work out what our materials list is to start with. So to make our photo frame, you will need some cardboard. A cereal box is great. Uh, a sharp, nicely sharpened pencil, a ruler, a shape to draw around. I'm going to draw around this um, booklet here, which will be about the right shape, I think, for my picture frame. Some safe scissors like these. These will be great. Some wrapping paper, magazines or pictures, anything you've got at home. A glue stick, a blue tack blob or a rubber. And I'll explain what we need those for a bit later. Sticky tape, a photo or picture um, to put in your frame and a short length of string or ribbon to help it uh, tie, hang up. So I'm going to come back in a minute having drawn around my um, piece of cereal box card, having drawn that shape around and cut it out. I'll see you in a minute. Right, I found my picture and I've just drawn a line all the way round and that's going to be the size of my photo. And what I've done then is draw another line inside, one centimetre inside the um, original line of the size of my picture that's going to go in the frame. So drawing that line one centimetre inside will show us how big the hole is going to be in our frame. Now this is where the rubber comes in. So we're going to take the rubber very carefully. Now get help from your family if this um, is, uh, if you need some help. And you're actually going to push the pencil right down into the middle of that shape there. And when I pick it up, I think I should have my rubber stuck to the back. Now, that's much better than um, the rubber sticking into my finger, isn't it? Or sticking into the table. Now, give it a, a bit of a shove like that. And we're making a nice big hole for us to start cutting. Now, what you're going to do is cut out this inside line. Don't go right to the edge because what would happen is your picture would just fall through the hole once you've made your frame. So just cut to the inside line. Now I just show you the quick way I like of cutting something like this and I go right to the corners with a cut once I've gone in through the hole. Get mum or dad to help you if you uh, like. Go to the corners and this makes it much easier to cut out that shape. There we go. Now, uh, I just chunk off these big pieces and then you can cut out the neat shape nice and slowly and carefully, making sure that we put all our bits away in the recycling. Now, we've used our cereal box. We're doing recycling, aren't we? We're giving it another purpose. It first held my cereal and now it's helping me make a picture frame. So I'll come back in a minute when I've cut that out neatly. Now, all cut out, let's have a think about decorating it. Now, it depends how busy you are, and I should think we're all pretty busy on this wonderful Towersy Festival. So if you haven't got a lot of time, you could just put some little pieces onto your frame. I've rubbed out um, that line where the photo, the size of the photo, do you remember I had that? And if, you, if you're very busy and you haven't got much time, you can just cut out some shapes. I've, uh, and just put a few dotted around um, and then you carry on with your rest of your activities. I've got some animal pictures here that, that would be rather fun stuck on there. Or we've got our pretty papers, our wrapping paper. And I'll show you what I did when I had quite a little bit of time to make this for you. So here's the one I made 
um, earlier and it's all decorated I used some uh, pretty papers and I used some uh, folk music tunes I thought would be good as well so I wonder if we could actually play those notes do you think we could and they've got a bit of a map um, but don't cut out any uh, cut up any maps that in mum or dad's car you might find you get lost next time you're trying to get home so uh, we've got some old maps there that I, I get from charity shops now we need to stick in our picture and here's our photo again and we're going to just uh, put a bit of sellotape onto the back here's our frame turn it over I'll just turn it the other way uh, in this case the back's almost as much fun as the front and I'm just going to pop it on there and I think you can probably see the shadow do you see the shadow of where um, the picture sits so we know we've got it in the right place and um, I'll come back when I've stuck it um, in place so just a little bit of sellotape on the corner here we are with our um, photo all stuck to the frame and we now need to make our little hanger now I've got a piece of a small piece of string here that will do fine or a bit of ribbon whatever um, mum or dad can find you and I'm just putting it there at the top we don't need much of a loop do we I've got rather long tails there and I'll explain that in a minute so we're going to put a little bit of sellotape across these two tails there that's it and do you see there's some more pieces sticking down there and we're going to tuck those up like little legs like that here they are whoops up you go little dancing legs aren't they and we're going to put another piece of tape across those little legs funnily enough now the reason for all that is that makes it a really strong attachment it won't slip out from this behind our um, picture now the other thing I've done is I've taken a piece of paper or if you've got a piece of another piece of card or um, another piece of cereal box up to you and I've just measured it one centimeter smaller than my um, frame and that's just to tidy up the background um, so that uh, it's nice and neat when you hang it on the wall so I'll be back when I've stuck that down and you can see what the final result is now I've stuck down the paper on the back but I just glued it right on the edges there in case I want to take that picture out at another time but if you've got a, um, a picture you've cut from a magazine and you're not worried then you can put glue all over the back but here we are, here's our final result. So thank you very much for joining me today and I hope you enjoy, have a lovely rest of the day for um, Towersy 2021 and hope to see you in the field next year. Bye. Hey guys, and welcome to Towersy Crafts. And here I'm going to be showing you how to use lollipop sticks to make boxes with lids and decorative bowls that you can keep things in. For this project you will need lollipop sticks, about 100 should do, glue and scissors. To start off we'll make the lid of our box. The shape of the box is a square, so line up however many sticks you need, comparing the width to the length of one stick. In my case this is 11. I'm using other sticks to make sure that the shape is even before we start gluing. Use two more lollipop sticks on either side and stick them down about a centimetre and a half inwards. This will keep the lid together. Now we're going to do the same on the other sides. You can cut them down to fit between the other two you've already placed. Only this time, we're going to place them too high. This will prevent the lid from falling off the box. Make sure all the sticks are flat and are placed properly before setting aside to dry. Now we're going to work on the main part of our box. To start, repeat the process of laying out your sticks and holding them together with another lollipop stick on either end. But this time, only leave a millimetre or so of space for the edge. These sticks are going to be the foundations for our wall. Next. Take another stick and add a tiny dab of glue on each end. 
You can now stick this on the other two on a new side to start a new wall. Once you have done this on both sides, repeat the process going in the opposite direction. Now you can keep doing this to build up the walls higher. Remember to keep checking in to make sure that your walls are straight. And there you go, one lollipop stick box. This is what it should look like after one hour of drying. If you want to try out the bowl design instead, use the exact same method to build up the walls, but starting with a ring of six sticks and gradually working your way in before finally adding the base. You can also try out different sizes of lolly sticks to get different sizes and results. I hope you enjoy this craft and you have a good summer. Happy Towsy!